son, Adrian Jr. Ah, right. Also wow. known, also known as Bam Bam. <laughs> I love it. Bam Bam Serrano. Somebody knocked your teeth out. Welcome, Mr. Serrano. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thanks for allowing me to come and speak today. Um, I've already been introduced a little bit, but I'll go through with how I wrote this up. My name is Adrian Serrano. I'm from Sussex, Wisconsin, and I'm a retired MMA fighter. So maybe in questioning, I can shed light on this world, because this is my world. This is what I've done for a long time. Um, I fought professionally from 1996 to 2008. Um, I'm currently a gym owner in the city of Milwaukee. I own a gym that trains MMA, kickboxing, judo, jiu-jitsu, grappling, and I train fighters. I had over 120 pro fights, pro MMA fights. And, and during that time, from 96 to 2008, also at the same time, I also did eight pro kickboxing fights. If you do the math, that's a lot of fights. I fought in a different era. Not only was I pretty much every fight I, every fight I ever had unregulated, unsanctioned, which kind of the same, means the same thing, because there's some confusion in that. Um, Pretty much every fight I ever had was unregulated, un unsanctioned. Um, it was a different era. Not only were most of my fights unsanctioned, but we fought a lot more often. Okay, as Senator Hansen alluded to, five years ago, I was against MMA becoming regulated in the state of Wisconsin. Okay, um, I've changed my mind since then. Um, let me go back though and tell you. Sit up. Sit up. Okay, uh, let me tell you what I was opposed to back then, okay? I was opposed to it for two reasons, mostly. One business and one personal. From the business point of view, I looked at it as the money these fighters and these promoters would have to pay would hinder the sport, would make it too high a price for some. Um, in, the, in the short term, that was probably true. There were some promoters that dropped out of the business, um, and there was also some difficulty for a, a, about a year there getting some fighters that had already been fighting to get used to having to pay this annual fee. And just to give you an idea of the annual fee, if you, unless you have insurance that'll cover your physical and blood work, and most, phys, most insurance companies don't want to pay for you, you to get medical tests and go in a cage. <laughs> it just, I don't know, some insurance companies usually don't want to do. So if you don't have insurance that'll cover any of your costs, a, a fighter aged 18 years old to 32, because at 33 then some different things kick in, from 18 to 32 costs about $150, $160 a year to be a, a licensed fighter in the state of Wisconsin, because you have to pay for your, your physical, your blood work, and your license fee itself. Um, so I was, that was one of the business reasons. Um, in the meantime, like I said, some promoters drop by the wayside, but in the long term, cream rises to the top. The best promoters stayed in business, and many of the same promoters that were promoting before 1999 in Wisconsin are still promoting, or I mean 2009, are still promoting in the state of Wisconsin. Um, the other reason, like I said, was more personal. Like I said, I had over 100 fights, 130 some fights, um, and I never had a major issue, a major injury, or a major disagreement about pay with a, with a promoter. Um, and I, like I said, I thought it would hinder the sport. I didn't speak, come up and speak against it at the time not five years ago, because I knew that I was against the tide. I was swimming against the tide on that. It was gonna happen. It was happening all over the country. When I first started fighting, there were no states that were regulated. By the time I stopped fighting, there was a handful. And, it, and I had stopped fighting before Wisconsin. My last fight was 2008. Yeah, 2008, and the state of Wisconsin became a regulated state in 2009. Um, and I even knew the staffer that was working in the legislation. Jay Wad's an old friend of mine. I knew some of the people involved in the legislation. I still um, didn't want, I, I knew I was against the, the issue. Um, 
now as a trainer, someone is retired from the fight, I see the need for safety. Okay, now it's not just me going in a cage, going in a ring, and fighting. It's young guys I'm training. So my perspective has changed on safety. Also, as far as the money that fighters, like I said, have 140, 150, 160 a year to be a licensed fighter in the state of Wisconsin, the best fighters find a way to come up with that money. The dedicated fighters, whether they have borrowed from their parents, because these are young guys mostly, you know, there's a lot of 20, 21 years old guys. Sometimes that's, that's, that was my concern back then was like, I had guys that weren't gonna be able to find $150, $200, but the best ones do. And if their family and friends kind of know they're dedicated and they're gonna train hard, they borrow the money. They borrow the money, sometimes get licensed the first one or two times. Um, Waving that. <laughs> I've changed my mind. Okay, and it, I believe regulation of the of MMA in the state of Wisconsin has helped MMA in the state of Wisconsin now, and I believe that regulation of, of kickboxing in the state of Wisconsin will help kickboxing and MMA because some of us go back and forth. Like I said, I had a ton of MMA fights. The reason I had the handful of kickboxing fights was someone offered me a payday to go in there and do a kickboxing match. And we're prize fighters. When, when you get to a pro level, you're fighting for money. And even, even though I, did, I wasn't trained as a kickboxer, I did some, well, eight of them actually. Um, but it all boils down to the safety, okay? About four and a half years ago, my ideas on safety changed. This is my son, Adrian Boss Serrano. And he'll tell you he's a fighter already. Um, I own a gym in Milwaukee. Junior's already grown up in a gym, and he'll continue to grow up in a gym. And if you ask him right now what he wants to do when he grows up, he'll look you in the eye and tell you, I'm already a fighter. Sometimes he wants to be an astronaut and play baseball, but <laughs> most days, most days, he's a fighter. I grew up, now I'm going a little bit of history. I grew up around judo and wrestling. Started judo when I was six years old, so he's like four years ahead of me. He started judo when he was two. I grew up around judo and wrestling. And I've been a fan and been a participant in wrestling and judo for all my life. Six, I'm 52 years old now. I still consider that I do judo every week, even though I haven't done a judo match in years. Um, I do judo all the time. Judo and wrestling, because they're Olympic sports, okay, and to stay with me for a second, because they're Olympic sports and all the regulation, all, not, all the governing bodies from the Olympic Committee to the USA Wrestling, USA Judo, that builds in a, a safety measures and procedures because it's Olympic sport. And also because wrestling is an established high school and college sport in the United States, that builds in things. And coaches are well trained, coaches understand the rules, coaches understand safety. We didn't always have that in MMA. Uh, there was some talk earlier about some of the old days. I fought some crazy things. I fought all over the world. I went to Brazil and fought with no gloves. Punches to the head with no gloves. I fought like that in Brazil and Japan a lot. Um, there was no, there wasn't the, the safety precautions in those days. Now I said, in the beginning I said, I was opposed to this becoming regulated five years ago. Partly because of personal reason I thought, well we didn't really need it. Look at all these fights I had. I never got hurt. I didn't have. A, I never had an argument with a promoter about getting paid. Maybe I was just lucky. Maybe I'm indestructible. Maybe I'm still indestructible. I'm over 50 years old and I train every day with 20-some-year-old fighters. And he keeps me going too. Maybe I just got lucky. I'm also, as a tough guy amongst tough guys, so I never had a promoter try and 
not pay me when the show was over. And I did hear of that. I'm not gonna lie, I, ha I did hear of that. And I did hear, I did see fights where someone got hurt and there wasn't proper medical there in the old days. But things have changed. And in the last 10 years, I've seen MMA get better in the United States and in Wisconsin in the last five years get better because of the sanctioning, because of the regulations. Um, and it's, it's and not just at the shows, it's in the gyms, it's in the culture of the gyms. Couple examples of how things have changed here. I wrote down a couple, but some of these might be kind of funny. Okay, gone are the days where somebody gets a fight, an MMA pro fight, in less than 24 hours notice, simply because they were in the car with a teammate driving to the weigh-ins, and they got to the weigh-ins, and somebody at their weight missed making weight. It's like, oh, so-and-so injured, or so-and-so didn't make weight. Anyone got a 170 pounder? Yeah, Joe rode a lot, drove, drove. How much you weigh today, Joe? Oh, I weigh about 172. Can you cut two pounds? Give me an hour. Joe has a fight. Gone are those days. Not only, do license, not only do fighters have to be licensed, but the promoters have to turn in a roster of fights a week before the show. There can be some last minute changes, but it's not as haphazard and crazy last minute changes like it used to be. It is a rough sport. There are times someone gets a cut, a nosebleed, injured in the gyms, in, at shows. Sit up, buddy. Sit up, sit up. <laughs> sit up, come on. All right, settle down. Fighters get injured. The way blood, and, blood spills and injuries are taken care of these days in MMA gyms are drastically different. Okay, in the old days, not so good. Today, things are a lot better, and part of that is because of regulations. These gym owners, trainers, coaches, fighters themselves, we've learned more about blood issues and cleaning up blood and safety issues because of regulation, because we're at these fights and you get the physical before the fight. You have to have physical to get your license every year because a doctor is there to take care of a fighter that's hurt after the fight because the paramedics are there. We've learned. So MMA has gotten better because of that. There's also talk about weight cutting. There is issues in MMA about two fighters taking too drastic of a weight cut. Um, I was trying to call my old friend to get, who would know this answer, but I couldn't get a hold of him. I probably first heard, uh, I, how many people know a little bit about high school wrestling? A little bit? Okay, high school wrestling, boxing, fighters, MMA, kickboxing, we cut weight. We cut weight to be our lowest. When I was fighting, I was cutting 30 pounds off my frame to fight at the lowest weight. It was pretty crazy. I don't want him to do it. Well, he barely weighs 30 pounds, but <laughs> at least now. Um, I probably first heard of high school wrestling, high school wrestlers having to have their body weight, their body fat percentage checked at the start of the season. I probably first heard of that in the late 80s and early 90s in Wisconsin. Maybe someone even knows more about me, even though I wrestled in high school college, I can't remember exactly when I first heard of it. It was late 80s, early 90s, I believe. And that's, that's to ensure that these high school wrestlers can't cut, you know, if, if, they, check, if, they, if they, they, they weigh in, they check their body fat percentage and it says, your body fat percentage is this much. The, it gives you a, a lowest that that wrestler can go. That wrestler can't go lower than that weight class for that season because their body fat was at a certain level. Like I said, wrestling, judo, been around a long time. High, established in high school and college sports, Olympic committee, builds in safety measures, builds in professionalism. Finally now, starting to hear those same kind of talk about professional fighters and at the highest level in the UFC having the talk of a couple states looking at fighters having their body fat checked and then having a, a limit of how low they can go. 
I'll try and wrap this up here. And I'll, I witnessed most of these changes myself over the last 10 years, five years, particularly in Wisconsin. MMA in Wisconsin has gotten better, it's gotten safer, gotten more professional. I believe kickboxing Wisconsin will do the same with regulations. Not just at the shows, but the culture of the gyms, the culture, the professionalism, the safety at the gyms, okay? And the professionalism of the coaches is very important too, part of the regulation, because when they have to be licensed, they have to be more professional. Back to the little guy here. Not again. Yeah, you. My son, Bam Bam here, tired. is tired. <laughs> My son has already grown up in a fighting gym. Hey. He's there almost every day with me. You want a shadow box? You want a shadow box for them? You think you can? Well, go ahead. Um, He's shy. Say. It's the crowd. <laughs> My son is probably going to grow up loving and competing in unarmed combat sports his whole life. Want a shadow box? Go ahead, shadow box. Go ahead, shadow box. I'll just talk here to these people. You go ahead and shadow box. He's going to grow up loving doing unarmed combat sports. He can do whatever he wants, but this is what I do. He's probably going to follow me. He already does judo. He already does jujitsu. He already does wrestling. The building sports towards MMA and kickboxing. He'll, maybe someday he'll do karate. Maybe he'll do taekwondo. I don't know. That's up to him. When he gets to be a teenager, well, don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. That's an important man. Don't hurt him. Maybe when he's a teenager, he'll be training seriously in MMA or kickboxing, or maybe even boxing. I don't know yet. But I'm asking you to support AB 76, pass it through committee, pass it on an assembly floor, make it law in Wisconsin. So I know that these sports my son is doing will be safer and run more professionally because the regulation passed. And I could answer any questions, especially if I had questions about the dark ages of fighting or some of the crazy things. Well, thank you, Mr. Serrano, for your testimony. I appreciate you coming. Any questions from the committee? <laughs> Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Serrano. Thank you, Mr. Serrano, for your testimony. I just wanted to ask what your thoughts were on, on the whole tragedy around Dennis Munson and what you think um, transpired there. Did, did it remind you of, the, like you said, those dark days before there was no regulation at all? I wasn't there that night, but in a way it, it wasn't done that way because there actually was a ringside doctor there. There was paramedics in the room, in the building. Um, the Munson family are my friends. They're like family. Junior, Junior shared his last two birthdays with Derek Munson. They share. They actually share a birthday, or it's like real close. Yeah, real one day apart. Junior shares a birthday with the twins, so his last two birthdays he celebrated with Derek. I'm close to the family. Derek still trains at my gym. Dennis trained a few times at my gym. I don't know exactly what happened that day, but I do know if kickboxing was regulated and sanctioned, whatever word you want to use there the state uh, professional, what's, how's, it, how's his name? State Safety Professional Safety? Yes, 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 yes. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I usually just say Adam, because Adam's the commissioner. Um, they would have more recourse be if it was sanctioned. That's the main difference. That's the main thing. And then can I ask, where, what, what's your gym? Where, where is it located? My gym's on the no northwest side. I'm on, on uh, Highway 100 in Silver Spring. Thank you. Sure. Representative Cole. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a quick statement. Uh, my son-in-law has uh, trained and uh, fought Dennis uh, internationally, actually. Uh, ah. He's in Taiwan now, and I've got a 10-month-old daughter who on occasion dresses like your son. So, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs>
thank you for coming. Sure. Any other questions from the committee? Mr. Chairman, I thank you for a moment. I, I just wanted to point out one thing. We often do get this question on the last part, 444.11, licenses to matchmakers. Yes. A lot of people in this building think we're talking about marrying couples <laughs> versus matchmakers being for a match. So I'm glad you're here to clear that up. Most of the matchmakers I know Hi, do call match.com. <laughs> Please don't say that. <laughs> Sorry, Mike Camp, if he ever hears this or. Uh, but licensing to matchmakers means in regards to a fight, not towards making a couple. Correct. All right. Correct. Thank you. I appreciate that clarification. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions, Mr. Serrano? See, thank you very much for making the trip to the capital. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Say thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>